Dear dreamers, welcome back to Emia Soleil and uh, this December's newsletter. Uh, this is the month of Mersugur in the third winter month, according to the Norse calendar. And this enigmatic name literally means sucking the marrow out of bones. And this December's theme it is. Up here in the former Norse parts of the Northern Hemisphere, December is known to be dark and cold. And uh, the olden ways uh, was to prepare for the darkest parts uh, by eating fat. Fat is energy and just like the bear endured the winter sleep with help of the layer of fat it puts on during the summer. The old and Norse people concentrated on a diet bestowing almost only on animal fat during the dark cold months. Yeah, energy is needed when there are dark times and December starts with the energizing planet Jupiter entering Capricorn the second as in today. But um, Capricorn is really important here um, with its focus on matter and concentrating concentration on physical things uh, like how to come out of this long time of darkness which as much energy as possible. This is a matter of great importance and the darkness is to be seen in the dark side of humanity as much as in the lack of light and sunshine. Concentrating on the fat marrow inside the bone symbolizes the security of being physically safe and satisfied as well as it symbolizes learning from that hidden nutritious energy inside oneself. The word marrow has a numerical value of 11 which uh, has the dignity of both balance, lust and transformation of hidden things inside belonging to the shadow. 11 is also a portal towards something new coming from the transformation process. The two pillars or ones in 11 represents the opposing sides that have to come together and will too when merging and thereby going through the portal. These opposing, uh, opposing sides are seen in the nature of Jupiter in Capricorn. The lowest and most solid material aspect satisfies and fulfills desires such as lust and hunger, while its uh, highest aspect expresses outgoing love which magnetically attracts the best. Uh, these two aspects are each just as important as the other. The lower aspect shows that the life-preserving measures must exist in what without doubt can be regarded as the dark night of the soul for humanity, while the higher proves that the process works since humanity collectively is moving away from selfish behavior through learning from cause and effect, even though this means suffering and pain. Both are needed to come through that portal. The wobbly thing is to keep on thriving despite of the darkness, hardships, uh, instead of um, becoming bitter and revengeful, and uh, not to stay in the satisfaction of having all needs met also. This is alchemy, my dear ones, and just like uh, <clears throat> Nigrido separating the soul and spirit from the putrefied body in a cleansing and cooking process to be able to be reborn in a higher version, the dark night of the soul is needed for humanity to go inwards and seek that dark, nutritious energy in good versus bad to be able to be symbolically reborn into a new and wiser form. The Capricorn triumph in matter is needed to be followed by the spiritual victory. Jupiter in Capricorn, this is. So uh, see to your health, uh, safety and health and build yourself a stable ground. And from there you start look upwards and start climbing for higher grounds. Let the hardships and struggles take its time. The darkness is for the soul what the soil is for the seed. The 12th, there is a full moon in Gemini, highlighting this duality of the Capricorn-Jupiter get-together with Gemini's own fundamental dualistic emanency. This is a great time for sacrificing what is no longer needed, like uh, at every full moon. But be careful so you don't sacrifice any of that inner nutrition, the marrow inside the bones, because in alchemy, what is cleansed is at the 
same time what is used to clean them. You wouldn't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Remember you are transforming lead into gold and the opposing sides are to be become the purple. December is also, as you know, the month when the winter solstice is held. And uh, in the Northern Hemisphere it falls on the 21st, if not living as high up as here in Sweden, where we are some six hours ahead of you, uh, and already have seen the daylight of the 22nd. Meanwhile, in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, you will hold the summer solstice celebrations, the 22nd, and uh, while our celebration is about the return of more sunlight here, uh, it is the opposite way around in the south, of course. No matter where we live, though, a solstice is really something to celebrate. It's an astronomical dance where we follow Mother Earth around her tilted axis, orbiting the sun. Beautiful and awe-inspiring, too. So, there's a Norse poem about the newborn daughter of the sun goddess Elsplendor, who, after being born, is swallowed up by the wolf Fenrir. By this being destined to the realm of darkness, where she will be riding the old path of her mother. The winter solstice is symbolically understood as the return of the life-giving sun goddess in a newborn form. But we have to wait for the light because it comes gradually. Yule begins at this solstice and means patient waiting during the time of darkness and at the same time rejoicing the process when going through the darkness towards the light. The newborn uh, sun goddess finally coming out from the dark ride is the spiritual victory coming after the material triumph. December 25th uh, was the date for the old Anglo-Saxon celebration of the ancestral mothers called Modranit, or the Night of the Mothers, which is seen in the Norse Disablot. The old mothers were seen also as the Norns, who ruled life, death and destiny of both men and gods. They were also midwives, who redeemed the newborn sun goddess in the crucial resurrection process leading to her continued life. She takes her mother's place and moves through the necessary darkness. Darkness is symbolically equal to confusion, inner, con inner nutrition and the, the dark night of the soul. And the confusion about darkness lays in the fear of the necessity of its own regular recurring. <laughs> and just like the Viking sun goddess Sunna was on an eternal flight from the devouring wolf of darkness, which she annually was swallowed by. We as humans try to avoid the darker part of our lives. But the truth is that we need to be devoured by our darkness in order to be reborn bright and shining. In the same way that December is coming every year and with its darkness bringing the light, Without the dark periods in life, we would not learn to know the parts of the old goddess. And what a shame that would be, since she is the one bringing light back to this world. Those parts walked in total darkness towards the transformation is the marrow inside the bones, my dear ones. The boiling down putrefaction is needed, and I would like to show you a 15 years old dream of mine occurring this special time of year when darkness comes upon us. Here it goes. I am visiting a female friend of mine with long blonde hair and together we wait for a man that she loves as much as she fears him. The man arrives and he is beautiful with dark hair and slightly slanted eyes and uh, he seems Sami to me. He wears a coat of thin light colored leather and with him are two Ave inspiring wolves, a male and a female. The man communicates with us in sign language, showing us that the word for longing means yes. And if we sign this to the wolves, it means that we trust them as well as they trust us. The Samiman says in sign language that it's important to be accepted by the wolves because otherwise they would attack. 
So I stretch out my hand towards them, beginning to do the necessary sign, and one of them comes to me and sniffs my hand. Then they pass me to go to my middle son coming into the room, laying down on the floor and forming himself as an X. One of the wolves lays down on the right side of his body and the other one on the left side. And my son laughs with joy. The summon man says, signs that uh, this is a rare kind of approval and I am so happy that this man has finally came. I know that I have been waiting for this to happen. And then I sing an unknown song, which I am not going to sing for you, but I'm going to tell you the words. And Sana had finally understood death as itself and not Michael with his rod. I wasn't able to fully wrap my head around this dream until reading the old Norse Edda poem about the winter solstice and identifying the name Sunna as the sun in the dying and rebirthing process. So here's my understanding of this dream. The female friend is a known passive aspect of mine. Passive as in receptive and reactive. Her fair, fair features with the long blonde hair gives her kind of a bright sunny appearance, while the man is unknown active since uh, uh, not being known but longed for and uh, he's bringing his um, his sami features brings the origin origin and roots uh, and the bright feminine and the dark masculine as two sides of a coin is uh, clearly relating to Norse uh, myth where the sun is feminine unlike myths from southern latitudes like for example Greek or Egyptian Besides, uh, this both of the feminine and the masculine are each two-folded, since the active male is both dark and light with his uh, light co colored leather, and um, since the passive female both longs and fears the arrival of him. Let's look at the Norse poem in its fullness. Uh, a daughter is birthed by elf splendor. After she is swallowed by the wolf, she shall ride as the gods are dying, the old parts of her mother. So here we can see that the daughter of the sun goddess is up for a ride in darkness and uh, probably a very scary one too. She has to accept it even though she's scared and since it's uh, the old parts of her mother, she's probably looking forward to it too in a way. Just the way the light haired bright friend of mine is longing for the active doing belonging to the soul's origin just as much as she fears it. The two ave inspiring wolves are symbols for the primitive instinctual self only seen in freedom. Here represented both in active and passive sides which uh, shows a unitary perfection. Using sign, uh, sign language shows there is time for communication beyond words. Knowledge uh, and the sign, which uh, in real life means uh, longing, does in the dream mean yes. This yes is about accepting the arrival of what is both scaring and tempting, the wild self. The fact that the wolves would attack if the acceptance isn't there means that the wild self could turn against the soul or dreamer. This happens when the fear of the own shadow blocks the deeper search for the self. Children are vulnerable aspects and my son using sign language, language means he symbolizes an innocent active aspect, naturally knowing how to communicate with the wild self. And innocent means trust and he's, uh, it's the natural opposite of fear, which makes up the very best basis for deep communication. Laying down on the floor deepens the trust and strengthens the grounding element in naturally innocent knowing. Forming an X aims at signs again, since X means being the center of the world, as in Omphalos, and as in crossing place, uh, according to the Sumerians. The stillness in the center of the galaxy is also present in the own microcosmos. 
as well as in the outer macrocosmos. And this natural and innocent way, uh, active way of communicating with the wild self creates a natural stillness. And this makes out a rare kind of common trust between the wild self and the innocent communicator aspect. Together this creates a total moment of being centered. The portal is open and the daughter of the sun goddess is coming forth from the old parts of her mother. The inner stillness helped her to not get lost in darkness. This is celebrated with a song summarizing that Sanna, the daughter, has feared Michael as death. Michael with his rod dream song says, and uh, Michael is quite a known name for the archangel with the Hebrew meaning who is like God, as well as he is the leader of the heavenly armies according to the book of Revelation. Quite an Ave inspiring one. And the rod is also to be seen in the book of Revelation as being made of iron belonging to the one who will rule the nation with it, nations with it. So Messiah would be the proper epithet of that one, and the son of sons should be that Sana had been considering this coming one as death. The return of Messiah would mean death. How come having such an idea? Well, it isn't that funny because uh, death means riding the paths of the olden mothers. And the olden mothers has, ha have been replaced with the, the gods. And uh, this daughter who is reborn uh, actually means the total opposite of the son. And Messiah is clearly a son. In a greater perspective, these opposites are supposed to merge together and become one, but the biblical concept has been working against the feminine from day one, in the same way it has corrupted the true meaning of the male part of the divine deity. The truth is that the old mother goddess has been locked up in a bottomless pit, and so also have her daughter. The Romans came to call their son god Sol Invictus as a god whose birthday came to be merged with the new Christian beliefs about the Son of God. The feminine side of the divinity was conveniently out of sight. The Norse newborn daughter of a goddess was forever replaced with the Christian Roman Son of God. Uh, the good news is that these seemingly opposing sides are to be merged into one and no one will ever mean death to the other anymore. When Sana hereafter sees death at as itself, as the putrefaction and cleansing yearning through the dark wilderness of the olden mothers, she will never be afraid anymore of the male side of her female self. The light will always return in a strong and wonderful way, which is of course synonym to coming through the portal when the two opposing sides come together. The night of the mothers or norns occurring the 25th is the same day as Mars moving in with Sagittarius. And since Mars is the second ruler of this sign, it means quite a tendency of being stirred by emotions. So if you haven't worked at all with your shadow, <coughs> excuse me, uh, then you will feel easily <laughs> challenged. So whenever this happens, just stop what you are doing and go inwards and seek your point of stillness, that X sign where your opposites can meet and merge. Work with yourself with all the love and understanding you have because this is your journey towards the newborn light. December 26 at the four degrees of Capricorn there is an annual annual solar eclipse where Sun and Moon align with Jupiter best seen in Saudi Arabia, southern India and parts of Indonesia um, and even if the eclipse isn't seen in other parts as, uh, as well of our world, uh, you still are a part of it. And uh, this eclipse activates uh, Jupiter trine Uranus, which uh, is a good one, with quite happy coincidences being available. This is also the date for a new moon in Capricorn, which means you can set new goals for the future. The work before this has to be done with patience and love though. And if you haven't reached a point where you have felt ready to do a let go ceremony, don't worry because the most important thing is that you let the alchemy do its work. 
Remember the X-Form as a helper when you feel stuck between a rock and a hard place. When you can't decide what is best for you. I don't mean literally you should lay down on the floor, but go into yourself in your most center of stillness. I would say though that since the sun and moon conjunction is the strongest and most uh, important aspect of astrology and therefore such an ideal opportunity for a new start, you will probably also get pretty good help from the Jupiter and Uranus intermingled to see clearly what has to go. Things look really good, even though the journey will be bumpy and dark towards understanding and balance. And you who are born at the cusp between Sagittarius and Capricorn will for sure have a very powerful last week of this year. This is nothing that will not affect the rest of you, but you cusp ones have something strengthened, some strengthened impacts coming. And if your birthday happens to be um, between the 18th to the 24th of December, you have... Um, to fold nature within your gen genes in this cusp uh, since you are born in this twilight zone between two signs. And Jupiter in Capricorn will have an impact on you for sure and your merging and energizing work having taken place since the second will, since the day, will uh, also be strengthened by the fact that Jupiter and Saturn will be in conjunction the very winter solstice day, the 21st. Saturn is going faster than the sun by then, and you must keep your feet on the ground, checking things both the second and third time before taking decisions of every kind. And this is to make sure that uh, what you have been working hard will not be lost. Remember to not throw the baby out with the bath water. Uh, not being able to let go of this Jupiter theme, I would like to ask you if anyone of you watched the Coldplay live concert sent from Jordan, both by sunrise and sunset, sunset last week, the 21st or 22nd, depending on where you live. It was a very strong one, energetically, all about their new record. It's um, actually about opposites and joining them, if you ask me. Uh, and on his t-shirt or uh, sweater, uh, the singer Chris Martin had uh, not only a sun and a moon, but also on one occasion the number of 42. And if you look at the symbol of Jupiter, it looks like being made of the numbers 2 and 1 making up number 4. And this symbol of Jupiter is initially representing the Greek letter Sita for Zeus. The numerical value of Z is 7, which is also the numerical value for Jupiter. The numbers in the Jupiter symbol also adds up as 7. The attribution of 7 is the sign of Gemini and it's also the numerical value of the lover's tarot card. 7 stands for completion and merging opposites to make uh, merging opposites to make something new come forth and shine the way is the very best way to start fresh. This is about to happen. You will see it in the world, change, changing pretty much the coming year, which start this December. Jupiter is our bringer of good news, carrying out the low and the high for us to make, uh, to, to work with on the inside, uh, making us part of a uh, creating the future from inside ourselves. Thereafter, we are supposed to carry the result out to the world to show that we know the path through darkness. Just like the old mothers do. Let's make our world a beautiful place and bless you so much. Uh, I want to remember you. I want you to remember to join our mailing list uh, because then you will receive your newsletter before the video is launched and thereby you will have a greater chance to be the first in line for the monthly offer. Go to www.meosoleil.com and write your email address in the square on top of the page and press submit. 
And this month's newsletter came with an offer of a Starborn horoscope for the half price. So to be able to get the price uh, subscribe um, for, com for, for coming um, months newsletters. And uh, please keep pressing the like button here on YouTube. I am still working hard to get my dream course ready and available for you all. And uh, that's why I haven't uh, got the time for doing as many videos as before. But that will change though. And soon I will uh, be here more often. Help me in uh, the meantime keeping this channel work up with your love and support. I love you all. Bless you.